So, who are you? Charlie. Um, I'm here, I guess, to talk about experiences as a disabled person. I'm Carl. I'm here as I have cerebral palsy, which for space reasons I'll refer to off onwards as CP, because it's a mouthful. I'm Tom and I have well, my disability, you can't really see it, but it's visual impairment. I'm Maisie and I'm here because I have fibromyalgia and people have loads of misconceptions about it. I'm Lily, um, I'm hard of hearing and a lot of people have lots of questions, so here I am. Oh, that's hard. Um... There's a lot, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, there is. I get this a lot, which I find quite amusing. Um, and it's just because, okay, so I use a wheelchair half the time and that's just because I'm pacing my energy, I'm trying to reduce pain on my legs, places like the library or whatever, you know, well, I don't need someone to help me with books, I'll just get up. Mm. But when people see that, they get really freaked out. <laughs> like, they're just like, whoa, <laughs> that girl's walking, <laughs> what's she doing? <laughs> it's not necessarily funny as in ha ha funny, but it's more weird is that what would often happen, it was nearly always old people who I'd be in a blue badge mm. spot and they'd sort of wait by my, by my car to point out like, you're too young to have a disability. <laughs> yeah. People will hang around and then they realise that someone's getting a wheelchair out of the car. Yeah, and then oh, they okay. sort of back off a bit. <laughs> I was in a hotel in Portugal once and obviously they'd cleaned um, all the doors and all the windows that morning. So I was gonna cut across and I ran straight into a glass door, because I didn't see it. <laughs> the awkwardness around this well makes me laugh. Oh yeah, it's very funny to cut into that awkwardness and yeah. just play no, on it. I'll often call myself a cripple <laughs> just, to, just to disengage yeah. that tension, and it gets laughs, yeah. so, you know. I, I make jokes about running upstairs. <laughs> I tell someone I have CP and they suddenly start opening doors for me. Opening automatic doors for me? Yeah, and it's like, come on, I yeah. can do yeah, it. Like, yeah. There's a button right behind you. I'd like the, in the world to change that people would stop feeling awkward about it. To feel like they need to apologise to you. <laughs> and that's not your fault, it's life. I've been managing fine with my hearing aids, but then it's really funny when people go, where are your cochlear implants? Because they're implanted in your brain. It's like, I can't just misplace a cochlear implant. So people are very weird about it all. Chronic fatigue is part of my condition. I get really tired. Um, and people often say to me, I'm sure you just need a good rest <laughs> and it'll be fine. And it's like, uh, that's not how it works. I can go to sleep for like eight hours, wake up and be, feel completely awful. Mm. I just, it's just completely, it's relative. Like, and um, sometimes if I sleep too much, it's just, yeah. So I'm just like, stop telling me, <laughs> I need to rest. I know, <laughs> like, I know. Oh, do you know Braille? Like, well, no, I just need large print. It would be too difficult to learn, just not worth it, so. Yeah, it's the same yeah. with sign. It's just like, I don't need to, and you- Manage fine as it is. Yeah. So my condition, um, it's functional neurological disorder. It's a bit confusing. The neurologists don't think it's purely neurological. Yeah. The psychologists don't think it's purely psychological. So a lot of people think, oh, well, if there's a psychological element to it, does that yeah. mean you can just like get up and Yeah, move? switch it yeah. off. Yeah. Well, one of the big misconceptions I get is how can you have CP if you walk? And, it, and it's sort of, I can get it to, to a degree, mm. but you still sort of have it. It's just a case of because you're not presenting in the sort yeah. of stereotypical way. The one that I can't understand is that um, people would ask if it was contagious. <laughs> and I was like, no. I think most people are just just assume that either you can hear or you're completely profoundly deaf and you cannot hear anything at all. And then, so people ask me like, why I don't have a deaf accent or um, kind of why I wear hearing aids instead of other things or why I can't sign. And it's just like, but you're talking to me right now. I've not had any issues so far. It's like, you can see for yourself why I don't need any other things. So it's just like, and why do I need to sign in a world full of hearing people? Like if I was part of the deaf community and I knew loads of deaf people, 
that would make more sense. I think I know about three deaf people in my yeah. life and they're all the same as me, they can't sign. It's hard to tell people what fibro is mm. because that not many people know about it. So when you tell them it's kind of a mobility issue, they kind of look at you and they go, we've got standing. <laughs> and it's like, well, yeah, I've still got mobility issues. Stop seeing people as the, the labels of their conditions and rather than that they are these people that can live a life. I think people have a conception that once you have um, once you have a thing <laughs> that's wrong with you, that whole thing defines you and that's that's not what happens at all. I always get well very, very well meaning people go, Oh, can you hear me? And I was like, you would know if I couldn't hear you. Like I would say something. It's kind of a defined line, isn't it, between like looking like you don't get care yeah. or looking like you care too much and you've defined that person with that thing. The disabled toilets, usually the doors are quite light so I can have yeah, no can. problems at all. I had someone once literally just run across a room to grab the door from my hand <laughs> and I was just like, what's going on? Like, oh, can I God. Be? Yeah, it's sort of that thing where it comes from a good place but it's just weird. I think there is, yeah. I've been really happy with the support I've given and I, and I guess I had high expectations because I came from a school that did really support me. Uh, see, I have a completely different experience. <laughs> uh, so I had a meeting with the person who's in charge of my uh, ILP and um, so he showed me a list of programmes that were for the visually impaired. <laughs> And so it was mostly spe um, text to speech. Yeah. And I was just like, I don't know how you expect this to help me, but it's not going to help me. And um, yeah, and my teacher of the deaf at school was very rubbish. So she kept telling people kind of, I wouldn't say lies, but they're like, didn't apply to me. And that got put into my ILP. And I found that um, nobody ever asked me what I wanted. Some of the systems are broken again. So I think everyone means well. Mm. Um, but I just think no one's talking to each other. I think there are some lecturers that are amazing with ILPs and there are some that suck. However, I find my student support officer in my school was amazing. I don't like it. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. Um, because for me it always tends to come from the people who don't like to talk about disability and they want to like cushion it away as something yeah. and make it, I don't know, more palatable. For me it's, it's almost impossible to change it because mm. it's so ubiquitous now. If you go back in history, um, someone who um, uh, say might, uh, might have been referred to as a spastic, say in mm. the 40s or 50s, they always referred to themselves as that. That, that, yeah. that was their self-identification. Then even when, you know, better sort of terms came in, they still used that yeah. term. I think that it doesn't matter what label you put on it, people are still going to feel awkward about it with a lack of education. You can't just change the name of something and expect people to understand the ins and outs of it. I can't see it either, because it's just like, it's kind of almost kind of I don't know how to explain it, but kind of almost going, it's not that bad. And for some people it really it is, is that bad and they do need the support. Disabled people have taken a real bashing politically for a while. Mm. Um, and I think that to just try and put that smooth plaster over it will actually take away from the people that actually are really struggling with their disability and need support. Um, because it is disability and you know we can sit here and we have our own our own sort of feelings around our own conditions, but that's not, we're not speaking for every disabled person. You know, everyone sees their disability as, as their thing. It's a very personal thing. Mm. Um, and I think that some people get more help than others. And I just think with cuts coming in, with people having to fund their own stuff, taking away from some of that negativity around it is actually gonna really disempower the movement to improve the lives of those people. Yeah. Changing a name doesn't help improve life. I'll tell you what will improve life is the world becoming completely accessible for everyone, designing for disability for everybody, putting things in place for a more open world. That's what's gonna help, not change.